Welcome back to Ezo Math. In this video, we're going to be doing subplots. And the first thing we need to do is set our domains. I'm going to be graphing the sine, the cosine, and their inverse functions. So I will be setting the, these domains that I will need appropriately. Domain 1 there is a linear space from 0 to pi in equal increments of uh, 100. Domain 2 is a Lin space from negative 1 to 1 again in equal increments of 100. And domain 3 is the lens space from a negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 in equal increments of 100. The first graph that I want to graph is the cosine. And I want to put these all in the same graph, so we want to do something called subplot. When I hit subplot, that's subplot two col two rows, two columns, and that's two two one is in the first position. So let's plot the cosine with domain one. That's going to be with the domain from zero to pi. And we see there that it put it in the first position. And let's set the X limits and the Y limits to give it a little bit of breathing room. So the X limits is from negative 0 0.2 to pi plus 0.2. The Y limits we're going to go from negative 1.2 to 1.2. And this again, this is just to give the graph a little bit of breathing room. And let's add a title. That is the cosine. And we see the graph here. The next, I want to put the subplot beside of it. So we're going to go row two, I mean, two rows, two columns in the second position. And we see that's the, going to be the second position there. And so we want to plot the inverse cosine or the arc cosine. And that's going to need to use domain two, where my domain is from negative one to one. There we see the graph. And again, I'm going to set my x, x limits and y limits on this to uh, give it a little bit of breathing room. And if you use the up arrow on your keyboard, you can just go back and, because it's the inverse of the previous function, just switch the x and y limits. And let's give it a title as well. And there we can see the cosine and the arc sine. And now we're going to go to position 3 and plot the sine. So subplot of two rows and two columns in that position 3. And we're going to plot the sine x. And we're going to be plotting the inverse. So we're going to use the negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. It's going to be domain 3. Okay, there we see we have the sign down there in position 3. And we're going to give it a little breathing room by setting the X limits and the Y limits. So we're going to negative pi over 2 minus 0 0.2 and pi over 2 plus 0.2. And we see there I made a mistake. What should that be? Ooh, that second negative pi over 2 should be a positive pi over 2. And it probably didn't like the spaces. So we still have a mistake. 
I have to go back and look at it again because the sign should not look like that from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So let's set my x limits again. Negative 0.2 minus pi over 2 and 0.2 plus pi over 2. Okay, and that should fix it. Okay, now I want to set my y limits. My negative 1.2 to 1.2. Again, just giving the graph a little breathing room. And the title for this graph will be the sine. It's looking very nice. Now we have the arc sign to graph. I'm going to do a subplot, two rows, two columns, and then the fourth position. We see there it opened up the graph in the fourth position. So we are plotting the arc sign, so we're going to need the domain that is a negative 1 to 1, and that was domain 2. We're plotting the arc sign of domain 2. And we have a mistake there. It looks like the arc sign, I should have just did ASIN instead of SINE. I did not recognize that function. That's okay. We all make mistakes. It has been fixed now. And now we'll give that graph a little bit of breathing room by setting the X limits and the Y limits. And then we will name it. We will title it Arc Sign. Using the up and down arrows to look at old commands I find to be very, very useful. Okay. Tile dark sign. And we look here and we have our plots. And we would go we want to use this on a test or in a handout. We would save it. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. And you see here that you have many options for the type of file that you save it as. I'm just going to say this is a JPEG. Okay, and there's our final product. I will get into setting the tick marks nicely for trig later.